Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film from a house on Willow Street. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with a burning house full of pictures of a happy family and a bunch of dolls. Hazel abruptly wakes up from this nightmare and answers a call. Later that night, we see Hazel stays together with her boyfriend, Aid. They are stalking a girl named Kathy as she enters her house. The scene then switches to an abandoned warehouse, where Hazel and Aid are accompanied by their friends, James and Mark. They plan to kidnap Kathy, who is the daughter of a wealthy diamond distributor, hoping to gain a large ransom from it. Hazel tells them that they need to abduct Kathy within six weeks, so she needs to know if they're in or not with the plan. Mark is worried about the time frame, nevertheless he agrees to join them. Six weeks later, everyone is in a van at night. They drive in front of Kathy's house. They equip guns as Hazel reminds them they're only for protection. Once they're ready, the four of them infiltrate the house. Mark is surprised that the house alarm is deactivated. Meanwhile, the others also explore the area, only to find it awfully quiet. Aid enters a room and is creeped out over a wardrobe that's littered with mysterious symbols. He senses someone behind him and sees Kathy with both her hands raised in surrender. As he points his gun at her, Mark grabs Kathy and they all flee the house and escape in their van. They drag a screaming Kathy to the abandoned warehouse with a bag over her head as they chain her and make her sit in a chair. Mark is in another room, observing Kathy through cameras. He places a picture of a little girl on one of the monitors. On the other hand, Hazel removes the bag from Kathy's head. Hazel is in disbelief over Kathy's dirty and sickly appearance and asks Aid what happened. He answers that they didn't do anything to Kathy, telling Hazel that they should still stick to the plan no matter what. When Kathy spits out the water that Hazel made her drink, she threatens them that they should let her go as it will be better for everyone. Hazel forcefully makes her drink water some more, and this prompts a change in her attitude. She begs for them to let her go, but Hazel only points a gun to her head and instructs her to cooperate with doing a ransom video. In another scene, James sees flickering lights in a corridor and proceeds to turn the lights off. As he turns around, he's startled to see a silhouette of a woman. This makes him turn on the lights, and by then, the silhouette has disappeared. James tries to turn on and off the lights multiple times, and when he's satisfied that the sexy woman is just his imagination, he walks away. Unbeknownst to him, the wounded woman is right beside him. The scene cuts to Hazel holding Kathy as A begins to record the ransom video. Kathy refuses to cooperate. Hazel convinces Kathy to cooperate as she promises that they won't harm her and is only after the money. Later, the four watch the finished video. Hazel instructs them to send it to Kathy's parents. Hazel calls Kathy's parents, but is confused as to why no one is answering. She tries again, but no one picks up. James starts to get angry. When no one answers the call, Hazel tells the others that they need to go back to the house, but Mark refuses. Mark tells her that's not the plan, and Hazel retaliates, saying that it's plan B. Aid tells Mark that he has no time to wait as he needs to be in a court trial in three days. Mark says that Aid should be the one to go back to the house. So James joins Aid to support him. Hazel tells them that they just need to scope the house. Aid reminds them that if somehow the parents have already responded, Hazel should tell them. While everyone is preoccupied, Kathy holds onto the chain that binds her and grips it tightly. The bell on her neck rings non-stop until the electricity in the warehouse goes out. Meanwhile, Aid and James drive off in their van. Hazel and Mark search for a way to turn the electricity back up. While Aid is driving, James reveals the reason why Aid is in a court trial. It's because Aid accidentally killed his own brother from reckless driving. Hazel fixes the lights by turning on the generator. As the lights flicker on and off, she gets scared by someone who looks like Kathy. After this, Hazel focuses her attention on where the actual Kathy is sitting. Kathy warns her that they're going to die unless they let her go. Hazel ignores her and proceeds to give her a blanket. Kathy suddenly holds Hazel's wrist and sings a lullaby that Hazel is familiar with. She removes Hazel's mask to see her whole face. Hazel asks her how Kathy knows the song that her mother used to sing to her as a child, but Kathy ignores her and instead tells her she knows a lot more than just that. She taunts Hazel about the death of her parents in the fire and further reveals the guilt that Hazel feels that she lived while her parents died. Hazel puts up a strong appearance and threatens Kathy to stop. Hazel goes away and begins to cry quietly. Mark hears a voice somewhere and leaves the room to investigate where it's coming from. On the other hand, Aid and James arrive back at the house. Now that they have the chance to fully examine the place, they're perplexed to see that the food is rotten. They agree to find the parents, the two separate from each other. James finds videotapes in the basement where the voice of Kathy's mother is playing, grabbing them. He also finds dead priests lying around in the basement. 
Back with aid, he enters what he presumes is the room of Kathy's parents. As he uncovers the sheets of the bed, he's beyond mortified to see Kathy's parents mutilated. Aid and James are horrified, wanting to get out of the house. Aid observes a picture of Kathy he's seen earlier, realizing that the direction of Kathy's body in the picture keeps on changing whenever he turns away from it. It's as though the picture is alive. Aid gets scared when a huge fat bloody man appears to flex his greasy muscles and tries to chase him like a meatball. Aid trips and falls to the ground. When he looks up, the fat man is gone. He breathes a sigh of relief but is startled again when James pulls him up. He reveals to James that the person he saw was his brother. He also tells James that Kathy's parents are dead, as James tells him that he discovered dead priests downstairs. Aid is worried that the police will think that they are the ones responsible for this mess, making the two get back to the warehouse immediately. As Aid drives, he sees an apparition of his brother again, which shocks him. This makes the van swerve and crash. James becomes conscious after several minutes and calls for Aid. When he finds Aid missing, he crawls out of the van to search for him. He is uncoordinated and still dazed by the crash. James walks to a forest and is wary of the odd noises around him. Meanwhile, Aid is actually still in the van. He wakes up and calls out for James, but receives no answer, so he also goes out of the van to look for him. James notices a woman a few feet away from him and tries to see her clearly, but she suddenly disappears. When James looks behind him, the woman appears, attacking and assaulting James. Aid hears James screams and runs after him. Aid finally sees James leaning on a tree and tells him they should go back. James reveals that the woman that assaulted him was his mom, saying that she is back. Aid reminds him that his mom had already died five years ago. He grabs James, and together they go back. In the warehouse, Mark is still investigating where the voice is coming from. He sees a figure of a little girl, who he recognizes as his dead daughter. The girl slowly turns around, terrifying him with her horrifying face. Mark shoots the girl with his gun, but moments later, Mark sees that no one is actually there. Hazel searches and looks for Mark. Like the others, Hazel is also haunted by apparitions of her dead mother, whose body is burned. She experiences the warehouse burning and wants to escape, but the door is locked. She hears her mom ushering her name and goes towards the sound. She looks up and sees the ceiling littered with words, wanting her to hide and save herself. Her attention is stolen by Mark, who tells her what he just went through. Later on, Aid and James return to the warehouse. James is now delirious, with white foam coming out of his mouth. The three put him in a room by himself, so he could rest. Aid tells them what he and James saw in Kathy's house. Mark is disappointed that they now can't get the diamonds anymore, but Hazel doesn't want to give up. Aid is angered by their priorities, saying that this is a matter of life and death. He tells them that Kathy might be behind the murders of her parents, the dead priests, and whatever that's been happening to them for. Aid grabs the tapes they retrieved from Kathy's house. They watch it to find out what transpired in the house. The tape starts with Kathy recording herself, saying that she messed up. She talks about how she found a sign in their basement and proceeds to explain the long history of their house, involving a series of strange cases of deaths of families who have moved into the house on Willow Street. It is then revealed that the previous owners of the house before Kathy's family were actually Hazel's family. Mark realizes the reason how Hazel knew about the diamonds was that she and Kathy's dads were business partners. Aid feels betrayed that she didn't tell him this, but Hazel brushes them off, telling them her story was irrelevant to the diamonds and that they should continue with the tape. Kathy warns whoever is watching the video that they shouldn't move into the house, or else they'll get wrapped in the curse of the demon, Trangle. She says that he is a devourer of tormented souls. She confesses that she's tormented because she aborted a baby without anyone knowing. After that, they watch another video of Kathy, who is in the early stages of being possessed by the demon. Her stomach is burned with a symbol, and she admits that she's being controlled by someone, and she wants to do whatever it commands her to do. Later, Kathy controls James despite being in chains. James' eyes begin to draw blood as he coughs up some more blood and wails in anguish. The three watch the last tape, showing a discussion between the priests and Kathy's parents. They explain the reason why the demon chose their house, and why it chose to possess Kathy. The demon has chosen the house, because it's the furthest point in the world from a holy relic kept in the Vatican. The take continues with Kathy's exorcism. The priest tells the parents that the demon wants to be set free and enter his true form. For that, he needs to consume four living souls. They ask how they can defeat it, and the priest answers that they must burn the body of the first possessed, which is Kathy. Her mom cries as the priest convinces them that this is for everyone's sake, because the more souls the demon consumes, the stronger he will become. As the priest tries to burn Kathy, she kills everyone by controlling different sharp objects, impaling them with them. 
The demon in her body was already aware that Hazel and the others were planning to abduct Kathy and waited for them to arrive. When the tape ends, Abe and Mark decide that they should escape the warehouse. They convince Hazel that they should just go and call the cops or for another priest to take care of the problem. They then hear James cries and run to retrieve him. As they open the door to where he was locked up, they find that he's not there. James tries to run away from the warehouse, but is stopped as Kathy controls him. The three watch as James is dragged in the air and forced to return inside the warehouse. Abe pursues James, while Hazel and Mark confront Kathy. Mark points a gun at Kathy, but she tells them it is futile to escape. She raises her head, and they see that her face has changed into a more sinister and demonic form. Mark proceeds to shoot Kathy. The bullets don't work on Kathy. Mark is then hoisted up in the air. Kathy proposes that Mark works for her, as she needs two more souls to consume, and she will let him meet his daughter again if he agrees. Aid and Hazel are haunted by the people who they're grieving for. Aid confesses to his brother what he's done. It turns out he made it look like his brother was driving the car when it was actually himself. But it's useless since he's sure the cops know everything. He apologizes to his brother and gets visited by his apparition one more time before it goes away. Aid then resumes his search for James. He finally finds James, but is sad to see him already possessed. He shoots James as he no longer has any other choice. Hazel and Aid find each other and are planning to escape when Mark commands them to get their hands on the desk. In the other room, James wakes up and stands. He removes the bullets from his body and goes out to find the others. Mark delivers Hazel and Aid to where Kathy is. He gets the keys from Hazel and frees Kathy from her chains. Kathy slowly hoists Aid and Hazel in the air and chokes them. Hearing their cries of pain, Mark changes his mind and tries to choke Kathy to death with the chains. He tells Hazel and Aid to leave. Kathy pretends that she's dead, and when Mark's guard is down, she attacks him and possesses him. Hazel and Aid frantically search for an exit. Hazel is surprised to see an apparition of her mother pointing to the direction where they need to go. Aid tries to open the vent to escape from Kathy. Hazel protects herself and Aid by shooting her until all the bullets are used. A possessed Mark and James join Kathy just as Aid opens the vent. He ushers Hazel to crawl into the vent. Aid sacrifices himself by locking Hazel out, telling her that only one of them can escape. He shoots Kathy. Hazel watches as Kathy deflects the bullets and shoots them all back at Aid, wounding him severely. Kathy tries to possess him. However, knowing that she only needs one more soul, Aid shoots himself in the head to prevent the demon from being freed. Hazel crawls out of the vent and is now outside the warehouse. She quickly locates the crashed van and hides inside it. She finds a lighter and sees that the others have already found her and are walking toward the van. The possessed Kathy, James, and Mark ambush Hazel. They gang up on her and try to possess her as well after teasing her with a long juicy tongue. Luckily, Hazel's mother aids and helps her by fighting off James and Mark. Hazel then hits a distracted Kathy on the head and chains her up in the van. Kathy starts chewing her skin off to remove the chain on her wrist as Hazel stares at James and Mark being burned by her mother's apparition. Remembering that she needs to kill Kathy by burning her, Hazel looks for her and then finds Kathy, hitting her in the face several times with a bar. Hazel forces Kathy inside the van to continue her plan of burning her. She starts dousing the vehicle with gasoline and sets it on fire. She watches as she hears Kathy scream in agony. The movie ends with Hazel surviving the demon's curse and running away from the scene as sirens coming from police cars are heard in the background. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.